How's it going everybody? In this video we are going to look at a breakdown of EVN or Easy Virtual Networking. Not to confuse this with Easy Network Virtualization because they are not the same thing. So what is EVN? Well if you're familiar with VRF Lite or Multi VRF basically the idea behind Multi VRF is to have the ability to segregate your traffic into different virtual routing instances or virtual routing and forwarding tables to separate the traffic throughout your network. The idea behind it is to have traffic for, say, for instance, your uh, web traffic is going to be separated from your database traffic, which is going to be separated from your, you know, whatever other type of traffic you have. You know, vMotion to your storage to your, you know, whatever. At the end of the day, the idea is to seg segregate traffic out. And normally, what you're going to do is you're going to separate or segregate your traffic into a virtual local area network or a VLAN. While a VLAN is is a way for you to break up a layer two switch into multiple virtual local area networks, so you can have different end users into different uh, different ports, having different access to different resources on different parts of the network. I mean, it gets it's pretty straightforward if you if you understand networking. Now a VRF, if you're not familiar with them, a VRF pretty much does the exact same thing. It's a layer three separation. Mm -hmm. So layer a VLAN is layer two to a switch. A it is analogous to the uh, layer three uh, on a on a router to a VRF. So a VRF is to a VLAN what a router is to a switch. So um, that's the general idea of how you would how you break down a VRF. Now, in order for this to work, you need to have traffic segmentation in your network to move forward. Whether that's traffic segmentation based off of maybe you work in a higher education and you have your faculty, you have your staff, you have IT, you have students, and you want to separate all that traffic out, you could do multi VRF. The drawback to this, though, is the fact that you need to do this on a per hop basis. So every interface that you want to run traffic across between routers and segregate all your traffic out, all of those devices need to be handled on a per a per uh, per hop basis, and it's not just a per hop basis. For every VRF, you need to create a virtual routing and forwarding instance for it. You need to create the interfaces, create the VRFs, place the interfaces in the VRFs, create your route distinguishers. Then you need to go in and do all your routing. So there's multiple layers to the to it to get it operational. EVN or Easy Virtual Networking kind of simplifies that whole idea by taking your network and simply assigning some tags to your configuration. So the idea behind it is to actually take the traffic underneath the VRF level and you activate the address family you want to forward traffic for. And then you go in and you simply apl apply a VNet tag. A VNet tag is going to be the same idea and capability of a .1Q tag in a trunk. So if you're familiar with .1Q trunking, that should be pretty easy for most of you under to understand. A VNet trunk does the exact same thing. It's got the same numbering structure. It was just repurposed to use the same value in the Ethernet header to do the same thing. So you create your VNet tag, whatever value you want to have, and there's no restriction on it as far as I can tell, like you will with the .1Q tag or .1Q trunks where you can't assign a certain VLAN ID to a uh, particular interface because of the fact that you got those reserved ones, like 1002 through 1005, and you, uh, you t I believe it starts 2000 through 4094, or sorry, 2 through 4094. So you have those aspects in, uh, come into play with it. So as you're going through and you're setting up your VNet tags, you set it up, and basically what EVN is, from a high-level overview, is simply a macro. Now, if you're not familiar with what a macro is, a macro in Cisco switching is going to be the capability for you to turn a macro on, and it's going to dynamically apply configuration to a particular interface or turn on a particular um, group of code uh, syntax inside the box to turn a particular feature on and the same thing if you were to go into a, a Cisco a switch that supports um, auto QoS well that's in itself is kind of a macro because it turns on auto QoS it pays attention to DSCP values it takes a look at uh, shaped round robin and some other features 
And by simply typing in that command, you automatically turn on the ability to mark your traffic that's coming inbound into the switch port, which by default, it does not. If you if you don't tell your switch to be paying attention to uh, layer two or uh, to voice and video markings, so like or I shouldn't even say that um, uh, any type of quality of service marking, it's going to remark it to zero and forward it on as just regular traffic scavenger class. So the idea of the VNet is to allow you to take the configuration and what you do is you create the VRF like you normally would. So you type in your VRF definition, you would go in and then set it up in such a way that you would apply the VNet tag much in the same way you would assign a um, assign a port to a VLAN. So by doing this, but you assign the VNet tag to the VRF and then place the interface in the VRF, the interface then inherits whatever configuration you have applied to the VRF. So the you consider the VRF as the parent object, and you can consider the interface to be a child object. The child will inherit whatever the parent has configured. So, if you're, uh, I'm a VMware guy, so a lot of that stuff comes into play. Where if you apply it to the data center level, it's only going to apply stuff to the data center level. Or if you go to the vCenter level, it'll apply to the vCenter level, uh, much like with the host level and stuff like that. So, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you apply things. So, once you've applied that, and then if you want to go from device to device, you would simply go to the interface level that's stating where traffic is going to be forwarding to, and simply type in the, the, the configuration of VNet trunk. And then what that automatically does on the back end, I'll show you this when we get into the config, it actually goes in and it actually macros in the uh, .1Q trunks. It goes in and sets up all the, applies all the interfaces to the correct VRFs. It sets up the VNet trunks. So it, by using one command, it automatically applies everything you need uh, globally for you. So it, it's a way for, it's a simplification or easy virtual networking. That's the idea behind it. So as we walk through here, I want to break down, give you guys some, um, uh, a couple of um, pictures, so you guys would be, so you guys can figure out exactly how this works. So the first picture I'm going to show you is this one. So this is pretty much this is a PDF I just downloaded from the, from the website. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here for you. The idea behind the VNet trunk is actually really simple. Over here, you happen to have three computers. Each one of these is in a different VRF. So we'll say the blue VRF, the yellow VRF, and the green VRF. So what you do is on the router, you would simply place, uh, in this case we're going to say loopbacks, we're going to place loopbacks into a particular VRF. So it'll only be reachable, um, the, the layer 3 segmentation will take place so that VRF 200 won't be able to talk to VRF, or a loop, uh, won't be able to talk to a loopback in VRF 300, and so on and so forth. So you place this in here, and at the VRF level, you type in the, the VNet tag. So whatever that number uh, would be, this would be the same thing as you typing in the, uh, the uh, switch port access VLAN and whatever the VLAN number would be. So you have that. And then over here on this side, between router 1 and 2, you have this configuration over here. This would be the VNet trunk. So what you do is at the interface that's connecting router 1 to router 2, and that interface, you would simply type in VNet trunk, and that would automatically create dot one q sub interfaces and place those dot one q sub interfaces in the appropriate VRFs so that they would inherit the traffic so they'd be able to forward traffic from this interface to to this interface going from router one to router two. The same thing would be applied over here on router two's interface. And then whatever interfaces are in the same VRF, routing will uh, continue on as normal in a normal VRF would. And on the other side you would have the appropriate interface loopbacks and the appropriate interfaces uh, the appropriate loopback interfaces and the appropriate VRFs, and then because of the fact that you're going to be looking at a tag, the traffic comes across and is a place where it needs to go. So that's the idea behind that. Now, I've never really done any real major work in a production environment where they're running multi-VRF aware routing, where they have uh, VRF light. Because remember, VRF light is just VRFs that don't have anything to do with MPLS. Because when you're working with MPLS, you are MPLS itself does not rely on a VRF, and VRF itself does not rely on MPLS. They are mutually exclusive. What that means is you can be running MPLS in the core of your enterprise environment all day long. It's never going to affect anything. 
all you'd have to do is turn on either MPLS LDP auto config, or you could type in MPLS IP at the interface level if you're using EIGRP or RIP. And the idea behind that would be you could run MPLS in your core, no problem. It's just a layer two forwarding capability. MPLS is just a label identification to a physical or to a to a subnet. That's all it is. It's labeled to subnet binding. That's all it is. So if you take that example, and then at the edge of your MPLS domain, you would have your provider edge device. A VRF is used to separate customer traffic. That's all it's designed for. And then what you would do is you would place a VRF. You would configure a route distinguisher and a route target. Route distinguisher makes the route unique. A route target determines which uh, provider edge devices are going to send and receive that VRF traffic. And then from there, you would go in and start exchanging routes. So depending on what your provider edge to customer edge traffic is going to be, that would determine if you're going to be doing any redistribution. And as you go along, that would make things a lot simpler. The problem with that being is, when you're doing VRFs, you have to, if you wanted to do VRFs up here, you could do that. We'd have to do all the VRF for this line, for the, for this VRF, for this VRF, for, the, for this VRF on a per interface basis, and do the same thing on this side, and then replicate what you did on router 1 for both interfaces for all of your VRFs on router 2. Easy virtual networking takes care of that for you by simply typing in VNet tag, whatever the value might be, and then for on the other side, VNet trunk. It's a macro that automatically configures all that stuff for you. So if we go scroll down a little farther here, you have your edge interfaces, as we can see here. You would, these, these guys would be, uh, be getting the VNet tag. Because of the fact that you'd be putting those interfaces inside of the, uh, the VRF, they would automatically inherit that information. And then the, tr the trunks, if you only have one interface, or one physical connection like we have over here, that's how your traffic would get where it's got to go. Because if you're down over here in the lower right-hand corner, if you look, I've got, I'm going to set it up to where we're going to have three separate interfaces on each router, and then we're going to have them in different VRFs, VNet tagged, and then these interfaces connecting these routers together are going to be VNet trunks. That's how we're going to, that's how we're going to lab this up and try it out. I've never actually done this before, so it'll be interesting to see how it comes out to play. But there's so much overlap and so much uh, uh, technology relationship between the VNet trunk and a .1Q trunk. A uh, 802.1Q tag associated to a VNet trunk or to a VNet tag. There's a lot of overlap. So I mean, it was very easy to gra uh, grasp the concept and the understanding of how this works. And when they drew it out like this, it was like, oh, that's in that's easy enough. So as you can see here, we have the VNet. Uh, we have uh, VRF blue, yellow, and green. You had them in their respective VRFs, and then you have the VNet tag. So the tag only applies when the traffic is going from router to router across the trunk. The same, th the same thing applies with the switch. When you're going across a switch, or going from switch to switch, you are coming out of a VR or out of a VLAN. You need to go up to, a you need to maintain that VLAN ID, so you, you insert a 4-byte .1Q header inside of, between layer 2 and layer 3 header. Then when the other router, I'm sorry, when the other switch receives that packet in, he looks at the .1Q tag and he says, oh, you belong in VLAN 10, so I'm going to place you in VLAN 10's MAC address table, and then you're going to carry on. And that's going to be on a per switch basis. So we're, as long as that VLAN ID is allowed to traverse that trunk, you're good to go. And the same thing applies here. So we have 1001, 2, 3 are going across, we have the VNet trunk, and then it gets off. It gets dropped off on the other side over here to the, to the appropriate uh, edge devices. And unless you have some sort of configuration in here to allow traffic to um, to be shared amongst its different VRFs, nothing would ever happen. They would they would be completely separated. So that raises the question: Well, what do you do if you need to be able to bring internet in, or wh whatever the case might be? You can't allow the traffic to talk to each other between the VR, uh, between the VNets. You have to go in there and you have to keep them absolutely separated. But they all need the internet. Well. Down towards the bottom of this PDF, we're going to get into a thing called route replication, where we're going to be able to replicate things from the global routing table into the VNet by using the term route replicate, and we're going to be able to bring in global internet. We're going to be able to bring in BGP. We're going to be able to bring in whatever we need to to get the traffic going, being using route maps and prefix lists. So you'll see how that works as we go along. So that's the general idea of how this would work. So as we come along here, this is what the routing table would look like. You have these physical interfaces, which you know, let's assume that for the moment that this uh, you want to be able to get 
let's say this guy is providing DHCP and DNS for the entire environment, and you, you need to get these two devices to be, they're in two different VNets, to be able to talk to the DHCP server. Well, what you could do on VRF Yellow is route replicate that those services down to VRF Blue and Green, and then they'd be able to replicate that information down. You know, what do you want to have access to? Well, just this particular device, create a prefix list, call that in, and then away you go. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have OSPF process 1, 2, and 3 for the different VRS that we have configured on the different interfaces that they're configured. And if you look over here, you'll see that we have uh, plus, this, this plus sign, that's an indication of a VNet. So if you come over here on the right-hand side, we have giga0001.y, um, uh, B, and this is an indication of the different VRFs that they're, uh, they're applying to, or I should say EVNs. And if we come down a little bit farther, you see how traffic is going across. Not everything needs to go across, as you can see. And you can get shared services to where you have this guy servicing uh, all these other devices over here that are two and three, four hops away. It really doesn't make a difference how far away the traffic is. What makes a difference is what you're trying to get where. Now, I'm going to talk about route replication as we go along here. Um, there are some uh, some issues that we need to pay attention to. This is, so for the uh, prefers a route with a better IGP administrative distance. So a lot of the stuff for route redistribution applies here. A better administrative, di a better default administrative distance, um, so on and so forth. We're going to do a very, very basic setup. We're not going to do anything advanced with route replication. More or less for you to understand the idea behind EBN. But I'm going to get this set up so we can see exactly what this looks like. So I'm going to pull up our, our router, or uh, super putty. And we're going to say on um, 7, 8, and 9, we're going to get that all set up so you guys can see this, what this looks like. But on router 9, as you can see, I was already playing with it a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create BRF. All right, what did I create? Do show BRF. BRF red. Okay, so we don't need to set a default route distinguisher. What we're going to do is we're type in BRF definition. And the definition capability, this uh, keyword is going to allow you to run both IPv4 and IPv6. So we're going to type in red. And we're going to type in uh, the uh, VNet tag is going to be whatever value we want to use. So in this case, we're going to use 1001. Okay. We're going to type in address family IPv4. We're going to type in, uh, that turns on the address family IPv4 for us. And then we're good to go. And we have the ability to route replicate if we would like to. So what we're going to do there, and then do show VRF. There's no default configuration here, though. Notice that. I'm going to jump out of here and type a VRF definition of green. And then a VNet tag of 1002. Uh, VNet tag, sorry. And then I'm going to go... Uh, then we have to go to address family IPv4 to turn that on. Exit out of this guy. And then we're going to type in uh, VRF definition uh, blue. And we're going to type in VNet tag of 1003. And then address family IPv4. We're going to go there. So that gets us everything we need to set up there. Next thing we need to type in here is type in do show IP interface brief. And we need to type in uh, interface loopback. 1001 IP address of we're going to type in uh, 10 dot uh, 1 dot 1 dot 9 slash 24 and we're going to type in uh, VRF forwarding and we're going to say and this one's going to be red apply the IP address again and that's all there is to it. Now do show VRF. We have a loopback 1001 inside of that VRF. Now we get to go exit out of here, type in interface loopback loopback 1002. The IP address is going to be we're going to do VRF definition VRF forwarding is going to be uh, what I create green then. I forgot what I created. Um, green 
and IP address of 10.1.2.9 slash 24 and then exit out of there and then we're going to type an IP or I'm sorry interface loopback 1003 and we're going to say VRF forwarding is uh, blue and we're going to say the IP address of 10.1.3.9 and that's all there really is to it so do show run VRF let that pull up so we have that situated right so now we get to do is we get to copy and paste this over as we go along so I'm going to pull up notepad I'm going to take this config out and I'm going to copy in let me screw this, scoot this up just a bit here and I'm going to start uh, start up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this in and this is going to give us a little bit of flexibility and um, the benefit to this though is going to give us the ability to go in here and just create the VRFs and then what we have to do once we create the VRFs and all the devices because we want to speed up the process here, this is going to be dot eight. This will be dot eight, and this will be dot eight. And copy and paste that. Go to router eight, and go to global config. Right click and paste. And there we go. And then do the same thing on for seven. Go to seven. And there's a question: Why am I doing it for each one? Well. Because they're going to be completely separated, you want to make sure you're going to have reachability to the, where they're going to be going. So, copy and paste that into 7. Go to Global Config. Now, in order for this to, to go across, we need to create VNet trunks as well. So, I'm going to be copying this in as we go. And there we go. So, now we get to do is we get to move this off, off to the side. I'm going to min minimize that for the moment. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy up. I'm going to cover me up for a moment and then what we need to do is on interface fast 1 slash 0 we type in uh, vnet trunk and uh, we can hit enter now what's going on the back end is we have some stuff going on now we type in do show run interface fast 1 slash 0 nothing's really going on right but if we take a look and type in do show IP interface brief pipe exclude UNA we have these uh, these um, what do you call it um, sub interfaces created so do show run interface fast one slash zero dot one thousand and one well here we are where we have the configuration pla placed in there so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're going to um, do the same thing for fast one slash one in that trunk. So the configuration is being applied there. And then we're going to go over to router 8 and do the exact same thing. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to type in uh, interface fast 1 slash 0 and type in vnet trunk. And now we can restrict it list and we can say what we want to do for a VRF list name. But we're not going to do that here. This would be the same thing as doing a um, doing a uh, trunk allowed list or a uh, prune eligible list. We'll talk about those more in detail because there's a couple questions that popped up right away when I said that. And we'll talk about those more in detail later on. So we got that and then we're going to go over to 9. Do the same thing. So interface fast 1 slash 1 vnet trunk. So that's all there really is to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and we have in order to get routing to work, you have to go in there and you have to turn on VRF aware routing. So what does that mean? We're going to exit out of here. We're going to type in router because we're using um, a combination of both a, a autonomous system and named mode router uh, EIGRP CCNP address family IPv4 autonomous system 789 question mark or uh, sorry, I just family IPv4 VRF uh, red 
and then autonomous system 789. So we want to put them in the same AS but different VRFs. We're going to type in uh, network of 10.0.0.0. And we're going to be able to exit out here. And then do the same thing over here. Type in blue. And hit enter. And network. Exit out of here. And then the same thing for green. So now we type in do show run pipe section EIGRP. Now we have our VRF configuration. So now I'm going to copy and paste this config. So we have to, let's see here, let me grab, let me grab all this. And let me go to pull up notepad again. Bring this guy over, paste this in. Now what we need to do is we need to blow away some of the stuff right here. Oh, address family. And that's what we want to have in there. That's what we need right there. And now we're going to copy paste this into 7, or I'm sorry, into 8. And that should be okay. And so we should form an adjacency over that. I'm going to go to 7 and get that configured as well. So now we tell you these have been router EIGRP uh, 789 question mark. Or I'm sorry, exit out of here. Router EIGRP 789 question mark. Enter. And we need to type in here address family question mark IPv4 VRF and then red and question mark and autonomous system of 789. And type in network of 10.0.0.0. And the same thing applies here. VRF blue and green. Now let's see if 8 and 9 have formed peerings. Okay, they haven't formed peerings yet, which tells me we might have to have a route distinguisher in there. And let me just scroll down here to the bottom. See if we had to have an RD in there. Um uh, doesn't appear to have a it might be a limitation to my iOS code. I might need to go down here to let's take a show uh show IP interface brief. I might need to go in here and to these guys and make them dot one encapsulation. So we're going to type in interface fast zero or uh, one slash zero dot one thousand one. Interesting. Not manually configurable. So show run, do show run interface. Fast one slash zero dot dot one thousand one. Okay, so let's type interface fast one slash zero and VNet trunk. Um, interesting. Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I, I don't. Uh, let's see. Let's do show derived config interface fast one slash zero dot one thousand one. That's what I'm looking for right there. So this is what it's doing right here. So what it's doing is it um, it created a description for it, and this is this is where the macro comes into play. We have the dot one q one thousand one vrf red, and so now if I was to type in ping vrf red, um, I'm sorry, red, and type in one nine two dot one six eight dot seventy nine dot seven. There it goes. Now it's a little slow, but if I typed in show uh, show IP route for VRF red, um, interesting. Like I said, this is my very first time playing with it, so I'm not 100% sure if this is correct. 
Let's do a uh, show IP protocols. I'm sorry, show run pipe section EIGRP. Alright, so we have our network in there. You know, I might need to go in there and specify specify some specifics. So let me go let me do oop, let me do that real quick. Uh global global, global config, uh router, EIGRP, CCNP, and then address family for this guy. Let's go to red for the beginning. I need I might need to be a bit more specific and type in network of um Network of 10.1.1.0.0.0.255. And do show run pipe section EIGRP. Let's see if that makes any difference. We'll try it for one VRF, and that fi if that fixes it, we know we're on the right track. So it's, let me type in um, control or control or EU, and then pull this, type in no, pull this network statement out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in um, on 8. We'll do the same thing. So we're going to go to on 8. No, wait. Yeah, on 8. We're going to go to, we're going to exit out of here. Uh, router, EIGRP, CCNP. Address family, IPv4. Actually, I think I, I copied it that and type in uh, network of 10.1.1.0.0.0.255 and we're going to type in show IP EIGRP interfaces for or uh, show IP EIGRP so it's, it's in there Show IP EIGRP VRF red interfaces. Show run interface loopback 1001. It's in the right VRF. Hmm. What am I missing? Show IP route. Actually, if you do a routing context, VRF red, it makes it a little easier. So show IP route. Yeah, it's not pulling in the config. I'm thinking maybe I need to do specifics. So let's actually, let's exit out of here. I wonder if I need to do different configuration for the individual VRF. So like for instance if I do a show IP route or a show IP interface brief I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that these are different IP addresses. So let me but see it won't let me change the configuration. Maybe I need to oh, maybe that's the problem. I need to go in there and turn the network command on on those. So let's see here. Let's type in network uh, router EIGRP CCNP address family IPv4 VRF red autonomous system 789 network of 192.168.79 or yeah, 79. Dot zero, zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five. yes I know I don't have to type that in let's do the same thing on the other side since we're already there and type in network of 192.168.79 or I'm sorry 89 uh, 89.0.0.0.255 okay there goes the adjacency so that was our problem and now we type in show or routing context VRF red show IP route 
And, okay, so the adjacency is up now. But for whatever reason, that peering is not coming across. Let me do the same thing on 8. So, as you can see, it does get a little convoluted. You'd have to play with it for a little bit to see if it's actually going to work. Um, let's see here. So the adjacency came up that way. The loop back should be in there. Why it's not coming up is beyond me. So do show run pipe section uh, EIGRP. So on 8, we should... Now, that was 9 that I looked at it on. 10 should... Now, 8 should have it. So now, so... Uh, if we look at 9, we type in... Uh, show IP route... Or show IP... Interface brief. That one's in there. So... Sh uh, exit out of here. Show IP route for VRF red... Show IP EIGRP VRF red interfaces. I'm not looking for any peers to join, I just want to advertise that route. So now if I go over to 8 and I do a do show IP route VRF red, I do not see any EIGRP routes. Interesting. I wonder if I would to... Hmm. Let me do the connection between 7 and 9. Or 7 and 8, I should say. And type in network of 192.168.78.0 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and 8. Do show run pipe section EIGRP. Um, part of my problem right there. Seventy eight. So I should form an adjacency. Oh, maybe not. Um, nine came up right away. Do ping. Uh, VRF red 192.168.78.8 Interesting. Do show run pipe section EIGRP. It's a little uh, it's a little easier with the VRF configuration, in my opinion, with some of this stuff. Oh, that's why I'm in the wrong VRF. Um, let me jump over to the right VRF. Let's actually just type in no to a lot of this crap right here. Well, actually, we're going to need it anyway. So, but I want to, since I've already got it configured on the other side, we, uh, and type in network of this, but pull this out. That should fix that should fix our connectivity issue. There it goes. Now on nine. Show IP route VRF red. And there's our D route. So we have that now through and it's through that. I think my code is just a bit dated and I th but see it shows where it's coming from, which is good. Now if I did a trace route, trace VRF red 
to 192.168.78.7 it is going the right direction and it does show you where it's going via red it just doesn't show you the the plus sign so I think in newer code that's what the problem is but that right there ladies and gentlemen is the EBN it's supposed to be as you can see it took a couple seconds for it to trigger but you still have to have reachability between your networks so um, the problem I'm seeing here is I'm not seeing the 10.1, the 10.2, things like that. I don't think they're going to pick up on that. I'm not sure if a loopback applies, so I think I might have to go a little farther with it. But at the end of the day, it still makes sense. You still get the route in there, which is a good sign. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. But remember, the VNet tag identifies the uh, is the, the qualifiers, and then as long as you have a um, interface in the right inter as long as you have an interface in the right VRF, it'll form an adjacency on that VRF, as you can see. So that's how that would work. So I hope this has been informative for you, and I do thank you for viewing.